Stayallday.com What's up, everybody? Dre Ball and DreAllDay.com. It's about 5.30 p.m. Eastern, Friday, February 28th. So if you posted a question on Q&A number 7 after that time, I did not get to it. You need to post it to the Q&A comments of this video. And as usual, as we do here, I'm reading all these questions for the first time. I'm going to go through and answer everybody's question. If you ask me something I have already covered, either in video or on my website or in a previous Q&A, I will let you know. Uh, you ask a whack question, it will be omitted, and let's get right into it. First question is Hamza Saji, who is my favorite rapper? If you go to my website, Hamza, you go to the About section, click on Favorites. I cover a bunch of my favorites and a bunch of things, but to answer your question, my favorite rapper is 50 Cent. Sadi Sal 1 says, do I ever get tired mentally? Yeah, every single day. That's the time when I go to bed, go to sleep, wake up the next day, and I've got a new batch of mental energy. So we all get tired. King Homer says, hey, Dre. An idea for your merchandise can be a product. It will look cool with the WOYG logo printed on it. That's for last week. I asked everyone if they had any ideas for merchandise, what they'd be interested in. So he's giving me an idea for merchandise. So thank you, King Homer. And anyone else who sends in an idea for merchandise, I am taking note of all this. Probably by the summer, we want to have everything out. Uh, you'll see stuff slowly trickling in on the merchandise website, which is WOYG, stands for work on your game, dot net. Iconic49 says, what motivates you to work on your game? Why do it? Is it fun or do you have to in some way? Uh, of course it's fun. I mean, it's basketball. It's a game. It should be fun for everybody. If basketball is not fun for you, you shouldn't be playing it. So, yes, it's definitely fun. And that's one thing that definitely gets me wanting to work on my game. Dr. Chris100 says, do I follow shift team uh, 10,000 hours? Dr. Chris, I did a video with Devin Williams, who's the guy who created and does the videos for ten thousand dollars did a video with him last summer a two-part q a if you go to my channel the collaborations playlist you'll see the two-part video with Devin. so you probably didn't know about that and now you know skinny shack says what do i do personally to prepare for a game it's not anything it's not any like list of things i do to prepare for a game i mean you stretch get warmed up you do the layup line shoot some shots get loose and then you play in the game as far as mentally preparing i got videos on that if you click you go to the search bar up here on YouTube, just type in Dre Baldwin pregame, and you'll see all the videos I put on pregame preparation and mental preparation and all that stuff. But what one person does mentally is not going to work for another person because our brains are all wired differently. So if you're asking, I'm assuming you're asking because you're trying to figure out what you should do, you got to find out what works for you. That's part of the work of your game. It's not just physical, it's also mental. You need to put just as much work, much work into that as you put into your physical side. Uh, Jay Shilcutt says, what's the best NBA signature workout program for creating plays on offense and finishing at the rim? Well, all of them. He's asking about the signature workouts available at hoophandbook.com. All, all of them are about creating plays and finishing at the basket. I think the best way you can figure out which program to start with, if you because there are a bunch to choose from, is decide which player whose game you want to, game and skills you want to uh, assimilate the most. So... You can't go wrong with any of them. It's not like anyone's the best, anyone's the worst. So just pick one and see how it goes for you. Let me know what your results were. Santrell Mills says, if I was in the NBA D League, do I think I average 20 or more points per game? Well, it's hard to say. I would have to actually be on the team and playing to answer that question. Me personally, for those of you who can't tell, I'm not really into the predictive stuff saying if this happened, I would do this and I would do that. I'm more about the reality of it. If something really does happen, We'll look at what did happen, what the actual reality of the situation instead of people talking about what they're going to do or what they would do. That's not really me. The Affiliates Project says, what is my favorite food that is not so good for me? Uh, I would say uh, fried chicken I like, a cheesecake, uh, pound cake, cupcakes, cake, 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 cake. B Soprano 2123 says, age ever a factor in the team selection of a player? When you look at teams such as in the D-League, overseas, etc., since the game is getting younger. Basically, if a player has game, are they ever too old to make it? Well, the first thing, be soprano, of course, age is a factor. Of course, if a team get, chooses a player, they're making an investment in that player, that maybe that player can grow with them. So if a player is 21 and a player is 31 with the exact same skill set, they probably go with the 21-year-old guy because that player still has room for improvement and they got a lot of years ahead of them. They probably have more years ahead of them than the 31-year-old guy. 
would have. As far as you saying the game getting younger, that's not necessarily true. The game has always been the same. Me, that analogy I just gave you has always existed ever since basketball was first created. So this is not a new thing that a younger player would be more two equal players and younger guys better for the team than the older guy. That's always been existed damn near in every sport. Yeah, every sport. I mean, sports, professional sports is a young man's game. Most athletes, by the time they're 40, you pretty much retire. You're out of the game because the body just can't do it anymore. So that's not a new thing. And as far as him saying, if a player has game and they ever too old to make it, well, you had to ask that individual player. There's no, that's not a factual thing. That's more of an opinion. Saying a player is too old is a person's opinion. Whether that be their opinion of themselves or somebody else's opinion of them. But it's not a factual thing. That's a matter of how that person feels. Like if somebody says, I'm too old to play ball no more, then they are. And if somebody their exact same age says, I'm not too old, then they're not. So it's all up to that individual, whether they're too old, too young, too good, not good enough, too skinny, too tall, too fat, too short, whatever you want to say. Vladimir1 says, you've been on YouTube for seven years. What part of your game do you feel has greatly improved over that time? Is it a skill you intended to improve? Well, Vladimir, I intend to improve every skill. So I think all my skills have improved. The only thing I would say probably hasn't gone up would probably be like athleticism because as you get older, when you're in your mid-20s, it's probably at its peak and it stays there. And as you get older, it, I can still do pretty much everything I can I could do before, but it's harder to maintain it. You got to do more work to maintain it and stay in that physical shape. And then, of course, as the 30s go on, the athleticism diminishes, but everything else pretty much is good. You probably can gain more strength as you get older because your body gets, your bones get denser. You can hold, it can carry more weight. Uh, other skills, I'd say probably uh, jump shooting has improved, ball handling has improved. My mental IQ, my basketball IQ, my feel for the game, passing skills, all that has improved over the years. Just from playing a lot and practicing a lot on my own. The Got Games. Has you ever dunked on an NBA player and it, do I remember who it was? I don't recall dunking on any NBA players. Mr. Cable says, Dre, I'm 18. I have chronic tendonitis, a.k.a. jumper's knee. Do you have any experience with this? Any suggestions about how to continue to train alongside it? Mr. Cable, uh, Jacob and I from the Jump Manual covered that. If you go to my website, it's dreallday.com slash jumper's knee. Dreallday.com slash jumper's knee. That's something that will handle that for you. Southern Hoops says, how can I get better at basketball without access to a basketball court? Some people try to study the game quote unquote for example well southern hoops if you already got an idea of what to do why are you asking me a question uh as far as getting better at basketball without access to a basketball court i don't know nothing about that if you want to be a basketball player and get better at basketball then you need to be on a basketball court it's like playing getting better at baseball without being on a baseball field you need to be doing the thing to get better at it how are you going to get better at the internet without access to the internet that doesn't make any sense so you need to go find you a basketball court. So whatever excuse you got for not having one, you need to throw that out the window and go find one if you're serious. By World says a W-O-Y-G compression shirt for between 30 and 50 bucks. Thank you for that uh, input. We will note that. Thank you. Elijah Mitchell says, I need to know what it takes to play in the NBA or just be the best basketball player. I'm 17 and I'm thin. I don't know what thin means. But... He wants to know what it takes to play in the NBA just be the best basketball player. Well, first of all, you need to work on your fucking game. So practice a lot. Second of all, play a lot. Third of all, when you're playing, show that you're good. But you want to be the best. That means you have to prove that you're better than everybody else. This means you got to play in games and prove it in the games. And to be able to prove it in the games, you got to practice on your own so that you actually have some skills to call on when you're playing in the game. So that's all you need to do. Santrell says... I don't even understand this question. Marcus Narcisse says, I know I can shoot and dribble and all of that, but during games I freeze up. What can I do to change it? And what age do you stop growing? Well, if you're not performing as well in games as you do in practice, Marcus, then what you need to do is playing more games. Playing more games and get experience. There's no magic words, no magic trick, nothing I'm going to tell you that's all of a sudden going to make you start playing good in games if you've never played good in games. I've covered this on my website. You go to my website, which is dreallday.com. Click on the link that says guides and tips. I actually have written about this in detail, how to perform better in games when you haven't been performing at the same level that you normally perform in practice or against your friends or by yourself. So I have covered that. Taurus Hayes says, what do I think 
Um, he also asked, what age do you stop growing? I mean, I don't have an exact number. There's not, a, there's not a set number for every single person. All of us have different bodies. So it's not guaranteed that if your friends stop growing at 18, that you're gonna stop growing at 18. You might grow till you 22. So there's no set age. If you really wanna know, you could probably Google that and get some more information, some professional information. And if you really wanna know your answer for you personally, you probably, well, you definitely would need to see a doctor. That's the only person who can give you a direct, accurate answer. Not anybody on YouTube. Taurus Hayes says, what I think is the key to getting the defender off balance? Is it quickness or what is it? Well, the thing about getting the defender off balance, Taurus, is that it's very simple. A very simple principle. You have to have your defender thinking you're going to do one thing and then you do a different thing. Simple as that. So if you got a defender backing up as if they think you might attack the basket and then you pull up and shoot, they're off balance because you're getting the shot off while they're on their heels. You got a defender thinking you're going to shoot while you're driving, they're leaning forward and you blow past them because they're leaning forward and you're going that way. You got a defender use a crossover, you get them thinking you're going to the right, but you actually go to the left or left and you go to the right. So as simple as that. So it's about deceiving the defender. It's not necessarily about tricking them. It's not necessarily about any particular move either. A lot of people ask me, what's the best move to get a defender off balance? That makes no sense whatsoever. Just think about it. If you and me playing one-on-one, -on -one, and then you do some great move and get me off balance, you cross me over and I'm like 10 feet going in the other direction and you score, the next time you try that exact same move, I'm probably going to be ready for it because I saw you do it already and you used it successfully against me. And maybe the next guy who guards you might have seen you do that move or know that you got a good crossover, so they'll be waiting on you to do the move. They might steal the ball from you. Or the next guy you play against might have played against a lot of guys in his career who have great crossovers, so when you do a crossover, he's ready for it because he's used to seeing people try crossovers against him. So it's not necessarily about any certain move. So you got to make sure you understand that. And the other thing about getting defenders off balance is it's also not about you don't have to trick a defender every single time. Like I can play somebody one on one and do the same. I can use two different moves and beat them in a the game over and over again, just using two moves. It's not about me tricking them every single time. It's about executing. If you all, all you watch the NBA. Now you know that the NBA teams have a coach, and y'all see all them coaches sitting on a bench, and all the coaches sitting behind them on a the bench. They got a bunch of scouts too, who are not even at the games. They're at other games scouting other teams. Every player in the NBA has been scouted. There's a scouting report on every single player in the NBA. What they like to do, what their tendencies are, where they're strong at, where they're weak at, where they shoot best at, what's the best way to quote unquote slow them down, what are the things that what are the things that they do best, where what do they like to shoot from, what moves they like to use, et cetera, et cetera. Every team in the league has been scouted. What are their favorite plays to run? What do they run when they sideline out of bounds? What do they run with five seconds on the shot clock? What do they run at the end of a game when they need a bucket? What's their best play to get the ball to their top score? All of this information is known. It's all out there. Everybody knows it in the NBA. But guess what? Kevin Durant still gets you 30 points. Carmelo Anthony still can get you 25 to 30 points every game. LeBron too. And, and the Spurs still run their offense. They still do their pick and roll. Chris Paul still does, does a screen and roll and gets the other point guard on his back. They still want to do the same things. Blake Griffin's still going to get his dunks. Kevin Love's still going to make three-pointers. James Harden's still going to use the Euro step. And even though everybody knows it's coming, they still do it. We call that execution. Execution means the other person knows exactly what you're going to do. They might be waiting for it, and you still do it anyway successfully. So it's not always about tricking the other person or coming up with some great magic that fools everybody in the room. That's not going to happen. You watch NBA basketball, you look at a player like Durant or James Harden. They're not doing 100 different moves every game. Most of those guys use four or five pet techniques to get all of their points. It's about four or five pet techniques they're using all the time. They're not using 20 different moves to get 20 different baskets. They'll use the same move 10 times, make six out of that 10. Then they'll use another move five times, make four out of those. Another move eight times, make three out of those. And that's how they get 30 points. So it's not about tricking people every single time. It's about executing. The only way you get good at executing is by practicing. Next question. AJF06, have I ever used jump manual? Yes, I used jump manual years back. I was going to use it again a couple years ago. I had actually wrote about it on my website, but I didn't because I had an injury that was non-jump manual related. So I ended up not doing it. I may end up doing it again, but I may not. So don't hold your breath waiting on that. But as far as anyone who's looking to see what my results were before they tried themselves. If you actually go to the Jump Manual website, which is drealday.com slash jump, use that link and I actually have a free giveaway offer of some hoop handbooks or DVDs 
as part of you using that link, drayupdate.com slash jump. And you'll see that the jump manual actually has a 60 day money back guarantee. So you actually have nothing to lose by trying the jump manual. It's a risk free trial. So if you don't like it, you just get your money back. So you could try it and find out for yourself if it worked for you instead of taking second and third party information of other people. Jack Han Hankin says, actually, this question will make no sense. Andy Sketch Talk 23 says, what time of day do you film your videos? So Andy, as I just told you, it's about 5.30 p.m. on Friday. Shalin Patel says, do you prefer wearing Nike or Adidas? Shalin, uh, most of the stuff I have is Nike. As far as fitness gear, Nike. I don't have much Adidas stuff. But if Adidas want to sponsor me and send me a bunch of stuff, I'll wear it if the price is right. Ahmed Masu says, when I'm in the gym, is it better to lift first or practice basketball first? Ahmed, I've actually covered this in the video, but... Any way to answer the question, it is no better. You just do what you want to do first. If you want to lift first, lift. If you want to play ball first, play ball. Try both and see what works best for you. Neither one of them is going to make you, neither one of them gives you any certain type of advantage. If one of them was clearly better, then everybody would already know that. So if you're still asking that question, it's because it doesn't really matter. So try both and see what works for you. What works for one guy may not necessarily be what works for you. So you need to find out by actually doing it. Indomitable Will says, should I run track in the off season or stay in the gym since track can help with speed, stamina, and other things important to basketball? Well, Indomitable Will, if you think track can help with speed, stamina, and other things important to basketball, why are you asking me if you should do it or not? If you already believe that and I tell you no, don't do it, you're just going to not do it and not get better to speed, stamina, and other things important to basketball, that makes no sense. So if you want to do track, do track. And if you don't, don't. But you can make that decision for yourself. It sounds like you already have. Jamal Atif says, who do you hoop with on a consistent basis and does he push you to get better? I don't hoop with anybody on a consistent basis. I practice by myself. 90% of my practice is by myself. Do I push myself to get better? I think so. Gonzalo Savidra says, how does somebody get in touch with you to play basketball? Because I live in Miami. You're one of the reasons I began to play this game. He's saying that because I live in Miami. Well, Gonzalo, uh, keep it real with you. I don't really play. I don't really. I'm not a guy who's like open and free to play basketball with anybody at any given moment. So, to get in touch with me to play basketball is probably not going to happen. Don't take it personal. It's nothing against you, but I don't just play basketball with any random person who says they want to play ball. Um, what else was I going to say about that? That's pretty much it. I mean, if you want to get trained, you can go to my website, drayalday.com slash training, and we can talk about training. But as far as us just playing together or working out or something like that, it's not something that I'm, I make myself available for. Jeezy Dogspin says, who am I thinking about doing a hoop handbook signature workouts on next? You'll see. When I got them ready to come out, I'll, of course, I put out a video and let y'all know. But until then, you got to wait. David Gray says, how do you become a good passer? by passing a lot. I mean, good is a matter of opinion. So you can call yourself a good passer. You can become a good passer right now by just believing that you are one. But if you want to get better at passing, you need to just pass. Play play basketball, put yourself in different situations, play in a lot of games against a lot of different people, and pass. It's the only way you're going to get better at it. Tristan Stevens says, if I could play against anybody in the NBA, who would it be? It wouldn't matter. If I was in the NBA on a team playing, I'd play against whoever the other team was. It wouldn't matter. The Annoying Asian says, how do you mentally prepare yourself? How did you mentally prepare yourself growing up to have confidence in your jump shot during games? The only way you get confidence in something is by doing it over and over again. You're not going to get confidence from... You can help build confidence a little bit by thinking about it or reading about it or watching a video about it or looking at somebody else do it. But the way to build actual real confidence lasting confidence is to actual actually do things you have to do the thing to get more confidence in it. it's like if you approach a girl first girl you talk to you know when you're growing up you might be nervous you don't know what to say you get all tongue-tied you sweating you know because you're nervous it's the first time doing it and the next time you're a little bit more confident and the next time your confidence is higher and by the time you've approached 300 girls is nothing to you it's easy it's like you talking to, it's like me talking to this camera right now it's nothing Matt Kelly says, what camera do you use to film your videos? I use a bunch of different cameras. I use my phone sometimes, iPhone 5S. I uh, use a Sony, I think. I got a Sony something over there. I've used the flip camera. I had a different Sony something. There's a couple other things. I don't even know the brands of these cameras. I just turn the camera on. When the red light goes on, I go to work. 
Daniel Bora says, you're a beast. Who would you say your NBA game is like? Well, first of all, thank you, Daniel. Uh, I wouldn't compare. I'm going to say my game is like anybody. It's hard to tell, really, because the NBA is such a different game than any other level because the every player is so good. It's a whole different game situation. So I would have to actually be playing against other guys in the league so I could compare my game to another guy in the league because they playing against guys in the league. So if you take them out of the league and put them in some other league, they might be playing a whole different style, if that makes sense. Deron Johnson says, can you do a video on a Michael Jordan type turnaround fadeaway? Deron, I've done a tutorial on the fadeaway jump shot. I did one in 2009, and I did another one like a year and a half ago. So you got to look at my post moves playlist and also my tutorials playlist. And also just go to the search bar right here on YouTube, type in my name, Dre Baldwin, type in fadeaway jump shot, type in tutorial. And you'll see it right there. I've done a bunch of those. I got three post moves programs available at hoophandbook.com. I got a Michael Jordan signature workout program at hoophandbook.com. So I've done a lot of that. And if you look at my one-on-one -on -one breakdowns videos, the videos where I break down one-on-one -on -one games that I actually played in, my scoring plays, you'll see a bunch of post moves that I did where I use a lot of turnaround jumpers. Chris Dan, let's play. Says, I'm 13, 6'4", 110 pounds, and I'm far too light. I can't, I just can't eat loads of food. Is there any way I can gain weight? Well, based on the information you gave me, since you can't eat loads of food, Chris Dan, no, you can't gain weight. No, you're just stuck in 110 pounds. But if you were to remove the word can't from your vocabulary, then yes, you can gain weight by eating more food. If you want to gain weight, you need to take in more calories than you burn. The reason you're not gaining weight because you're probably taking in about just as much as you burn. If you want to gain weight, you need to eat more than you're burning. Simple as that. Joe Alai says, is it fine to play pickup games that are generally intense while doing the jump manual? Of course. The reason you're doing the jump manual is to get better at your sport. You're not doing it just so you can jump, you know, go outside and just jump and touch the wall. You're doing it so you can play basketball, right? The only thing you need to be careful with in doing the jump manual is that you don't want to do any other off-the-court training that may interfere with the jump manual because you may end up overtraining and or injuring yourself. But if you get the jump manual, dreyallday.com slash jump, you read the actual program because Jacob has a bunch of information that you have to actually read before you start doing the exercises. You'll understand completely what you can do, what you can't do, and why. So just get the program and read it. Again, it comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee. Isaiah Kelly says, that's a try Dre all day shoes for 250 bucks. All right, good idea. We'll see. We'll see if that comes to fruition. Skinny Pirate says, Dre, do you do some... You should do some dry fit gear, like t-shirts and long sleeves with the work on your gang logo like this one or WYFG stuff. All right, Skinny Pirate, appreciate that. Sal Rosala says, do you have a girlfriend? No, I'm single. Martin Ivanov says, do you edit your videos? Do you have someone edit them for you? For the most part, I edit them myself. Ricky Gutierrez says, do you ever have a fun rival playing at school or at the park? Uh, yeah, I mean, in school, when we play pickup every day, of course, you play against certain people all the time. If you read my book, Buy a Game, I actually talk about that in detail. And the book is free. It's at dreallday.com slash buy, that's B-U-Y, like buy food from the store. Buy a game. That is free on my website. Nick Leather says you should try working your game, warm up, pull over long sleeve shirt like high schools and colleges use for 25 to 45 bucks. Okay, Nick Leather, thank you. I'm definitely taking note of all these suggestions you guys have for gear. We're getting all this stuff rolling out probably towards the summer of 2014, but slowly we'll be bringing stuff in. Just stay tuned to the website, woyg.net. That's where all the merchandise will be from here on out. Derek Booth says, have you ever been to Memphis? Derek, I don't think I've ever been to Memphis. I've been to Tennessee, but I have not been to Memphis. Not that I can think of. If I think that I have before this video is over, I'll tell you. August Bucket says, have I ever heard Jesus? I guess that's the album by Kanye West he's referring to. Of course I heard it. Jamie Gonzalez says, I'm 1,580 pounds, 6 feet tall, and I can't do push-ups. Yeah, I have no arm muscle. Do I suggest he do knee push-ups, a.k.a. girl push-ups, to improve his arms so he can do full man push-ups? Do I suggest something like dumbbells? Any advice would be great. Well, first of all, Jamie, we do have a program that covers strength. We actually got two. One of them is called a position of power which is a strength training program that uses weights and equipment, but I wouldn't suggest you use that. I would suggest you try the Ultimate Athlete. That's a 15-week program, which requires no weights, no equipment. You don't even need a gym. You can do it in your living room if you want. You can do it in your bedroom. That covers strength, 
covers core power, covers agility, covers flexibility, covers conditioning, stamina, speed, and quickness. And that will help build up your functional strength. You don't need to be using weights. If you can't do push-ups, you should not be touching dumbbells. Absolutely not. And as far as him asking should he do knee push-ups, a.k.a. girl push-ups, we don't call them girl push-ups. We call them modified push-ups. Right, we're not going to call them girl push-ups. That's kind of 80s lingo. It's 2014 now. So, yes, the more modified push-ups you do, the more full push-ups you'll be able to do. So you can do that. But, again, check out the Ultimate Athlete at HoopHandbook.com. You can read all the information and details about what the program encapsulates. And you can also watch the video of me introducing it. That program is not written by me. It's written by my trainer. Her name is Maria Solon Scully. She's a certified strength and conditioning coach. You all seen her in my videos. Jonathan B. says, what's the average salary for athletes playing pro basketball without being in the NBA like you have overseas? Is it enough to be as wealthy as some average NBA players? Well, first of all, Jonathan, there is no average salary in it for playing pro basketball outside of the NBA. The reason that there isn't is because in the NBA, there's a players union. There's a, certain, there's a collective bargaining agreement. Y'all remember a couple years ago, there was a lockout. That's because the union, which represents all the players and the owners, the people who actually cut the checks, cannot come to an agreement on certain financial matters. That's the reason there was a lockout. They came to an agreement. And in that collective bargaining agreement, there is always a minimum salary and a maximum salary that they will allow in the league. So every player in the league has to be somewhere between that minimum and that maximum. Overseas, there is no minimum, there is no maximum, there is no players union, there is no collective bargaining agreement. It's basically the Wild West. You get what you negotiate, and that's there is no there's really no, well, you can get a lawyer if you have some type of legal situation, but there is no collective bargaining agreement to fall back on. So there is no average salary at all. Whatever you negotiate is what you get, whether that be a million dollars or one dollar, whatever you negotiate. And as far as he asks, is enough to be as wealthy as some average NBA players? Jonathan, I don't think you know what the word wealthy means. You should probably look that up. And you would not know how wealthy somebody is just by their salary. Wealth is not about how much money you actually get in your check. It's about income that you have coming in outside of what you're actually going to work for every single day. But again, look that up. Educate yourself, educate yourself a little bit on finances, and you'll understand what I mean. Matthew O'Shea J. Dre, I had my first game on Monday. How do I get warmed up and lose fear? Well, Matthew, you know how to play basketball, so you don't need me to tell you how to get warmed up. And he says, how do I lose fear? You don't necessarily lose fear. I mean, it's your first game, so you might... Be, you should, probably will be nervous. It's the first basketball game. So play in the game, get experience, get used to playing in games. This means you need to play in more games. Next game you'll play, you'll be less nervous or less fearful in the next game and the next game and the next game. But you got to go out there and play and face the fear. It's not necessarily about not having fear. It's about facing it so that you're not afraid of it. In production, it says, have I seen the Lenny Cook movie and what are my thoughts about him? I have not seen the movie in production, but I do got it saved on my DVR. So I either watch it on the DVR or I'll watch it online. I do definitely want to see that movie. I heard a lot of good things about it. I don't really have any thoughts about him. I don't know Lenny Cook, never played against him or anything like that. For those who don't know who Lenny Cook is, look him up. Adrian Morales says, what are your opinion on crazy lights? Do I have any? I believe Crazy Lights are the Adidas sneakers. I do not own any Crazy Lights, never worn them before, so I have no opinion on them. Johnny Adane says, what age does a guy stop growing? Because I think 21 or 25, I don't know. That's why I want to know because I'm 5'7". Well, here's the thing, Johnny. You have no control over your age. So you have no control. I'm sorry. Well, you don't have control over your age either, but you have no control over your height. So even if I told you the exact date when you're going to stop growing, what does it matter? You have no control over it. You can't change it. You can't alter it. So all you can do is work on what you can alter, which is your skills, your attitude, your effort, and your energy. That's basically all you can control. So I don't know what age a guy stops growing. There is no exact age for every single person, as I said earlier in this video. If you need to know the exact age you will stop growing, the closest you will get to an answer, an actual good answer, is from an actual doctor who had to examine you individually, not just some random answer you get from some commentator or even on the internet, you had to have a doctor examine you personally. Coach Alex Mastro says, first of all, I love your videos, I love your attitude towards basketball, you'd be the best coach. Well, thank you, Alex. He says, do you think I'd be, do I think I'd be interested in becoming a full-time trainer or coach after my playing days? Would I start coaching straight away? <coughs> Excuse me, or would I instead go back to school and get a degree in coaching? 
Well, first of all, Alex, I appreciate the compliment. Uh, as far as being a trainer or coach, I would never say never, but I'm not interested in being either. When I'm done playing, I'm done. I won't be training. I won't be coaching. As far as him asking whether I go straight into it or get a degree in coaching, there's no such thing as a degree in coaching. If you're going to be a coach, you just need a degree, period, from college. I have friends who are coaches. I know a lot of people who coach high school and college basketball. I already have a degree. I got a degree in business management and marketing from Penn State University. 2004. So if I wanted to be a coach, I could be one, but I'm not interested in being one. Rudolph Lakers forever. He says, how far do I think the Lakers will go if Kobe did not tear his Achilles? Well, Rudolph, Kobe did tear his Achilles, so who cares? I mean, I like dealing more in reality of what actually did happen and what might have happened and what could have happened. So let's just talk about the reality, which is the Lakers are, they don't have Kobe and they are who they are. Brandon Adenoff says, thanks for answering my questions. My question is, how much do you attribute success on the court to weightlifting slash physical strength? When you play, are you usually one of the strongest players on the court? Well, as far as being one of the strongest players on the court, I mean, it's hard to kind of say. It's not like we pause the game and have an arm wrestling contest to see who's the strongest. So I don't know. I mean, I feel like I can hold my own. I can stand my ground on the court against anybody at any level as far as strength goes. Do I think is how much of my success on the court do I attribute to it? I think it definitely plays a role. I mean, you lift weights, so you be able to hold your ground. You might be able to push a guy around a little bit or not be pushed around. You can stand your ground in the paint. You can hold your position in the post. Maybe you can box out guys a little bit easier, hold on to the ball a little stronger when you got arms slapping at you, maybe finishing through contact and things like that. So a lot of things go, a lot of things that help you in basketball come from strength training, but there's not a certain percentage number I can put on that answer. Stan Moriso says, guys should help the Dre versus Smallville game. That's the verse one Federation Kickstarter campaign. Uh, this is the thing with that. A lot of people may ask me, yo, why don't you just go to Texas instead of them coming to Miami? Well, here's the thing. They, first of all, they challenged me to this game. I didn't challenge them to this game. I, was, I did a Q&A with Jonathan from verse one. And I said, if I happen to play against anybody in your league or if I was in your league, who would you have me play against? He kind of twisted it around like, oh, Dre needs to play this guy one-on-one. -on -one. I don't, it was never no big deal for me to play this guy. I never even heard of this dude before we did the verse one Q&A video. So everybody needs to understand that. If the game happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. This is their Kickstarter campaign. It's not my campaign to bring them here. It's their campaign to send themselves from Texas to Miami. And along the way, they're making a couple other stops to play some other people. So it's not just for this one game. So that's why it's not me going there. It's them coming here because they challenged me. I didn't challenge them. So everybody needs to understand that. And he put a link to the Kickstarter thing. So if you actually go to dreyalday.com slash, I believe it's verse one, you'll see the Kickstarter link. And you can also see the video I put out talking about it on my channel. Eric Zapata says, do you got shoe game? I don't even know what that means. So I guess I don't. Young Slay says, so I see you've been playing since 14. When did you actually start taking it serious and realize this is what you wanted to do? I can tell you put a lot in the work, put in a lot of work in your 30s, right? And he asked him on my 30s, that's yes, 32 years old. He said, I don't understand how someone so good is not in the D-League, pros, or overseas. What's the oldest age you know or heard about being drafted to the NBA? Well, first of all, young Slay, a lot of questions you're asking me are based on assumptions that are just incorrect. So you need to go to my website, dreallday.com, and get some knowledge about me. First of all, I got a book called Buy a Game. That's B-U-Y, a game, dreallday.com slash buy a game. That's free. You can read that book to find out about my basketball background. And if, when you're on my website, dreallday.com, click on the link that says basketball, you can find out about my professional career, which uh, addresses a question that you asked, which is incorrect. And, yeah, that's about it. So, young slave, you just need to do some, do some research on me, which is all on my website, so it won't be hard for you to do. Greg Mendoza says, when do you normally ball now often, and how often did you practice when you first started? Greg Mendoza, go to my book, dreallday.com slash buy a game, just like I told the previous person, and you can read about it. Aaron O. Sullivan says, you make it to the NBA, what are your goals? Do you want to win any awards? Well, if I make it to the NBA, we'll go from there. We'll see what the situation is, and then I can base what I would want to do based on the reality of the situation. So we'll see. Guy Lee says, being 5'6 without a crazy vertical like Nate Robinson, how can I survive on the court? Is long range three-point shooting the only way to go? 
Magali, first of all, Nate Robinson has a crazy vertical, but it's not like Nate Robinson's out there swatting shots left and right and dunking on guys every night. Nate Robinson dunks maybe four or five times a year and is like the play of the night on Sports Center. So people think just because he got those dunks, like that's what he does every game. No. Nate Robinson dunks like fewer than 10 times in 82 games a season. So it's not like he's just jumping all over the place. A lot of people talk about that. It doesn't make any sense. Nate Robinson's skill in the NBA. The reason Nate Robinson's in the NBA is not because he can dunk. Okay, he's not jumping over nobody. He's not dunking on anybody. He'll get his breakaway dunks and as a highlight because he's so small and it's like, wow, look at the little guy dunk. Nate Robinson's a ball handler. He plays good defense. He can shoot. He can run the pick and roll. He can score. That's why he's in the NBA. It has nothing to do with being able to jump. Of course, those things that I just mentioned, the fact that he's athletic, play a role in his ability to do those things, but it's not the actual dunks that have him in the NBA. So people really need to understand that. So the fact that you're 5'6", the skills you can use to be good at basketball, just like I said, ball handling, defending, leadership, taking care of the ball as far as ball handling. Outside shooting is definitely being able to run an offense, passing the ball. Those are the things you need to be able to do. Kevon Wesley says, how do I find my shot and play against hacks? You just do it. I mean, I play ball. You got to learn to finish through contact. I talked about this earlier in a question about strength training. Just being strong play a role. It definitely plays a role. You just got to play through it. Get stronger. If, you, if you're complaining about the hacks, then that means the problem is you. It's not them. You need to play stronger, finish through contact, and not complain. Michael Rodriguez says, what's the best signature workout program at hoophandbook.com for post moves of finishing around the rim and shooting off the dribble? Well, all three of those things you're asking, I mean all of them. <laughs> all of them are covered in some way, shape, or form. As far as post moves... We got LeBron, you got D-Wade, you got Kobe, MJ, T-Mac, Blake Griffin, Tim Duncan. Finishing, all of them. All of them focus on finishing, of course. Off the dribble shooting, you got any of the guards. You got Kyrie Irving, you got Jamal Crawford, Damian Lillard, KD, Allen Iverson, Derrick Rose, Stephen Curry. All these, all these programs cover off the dribble. Every player that I just named has a Hoop Handbook signature workout program based off their skills. If you go to hoophandbook.com. Any of you can see those programs and you click on the links, you can read the details of each program. Brandon Sella says, if I got a free Xbox One, would I play it? I don't know, Brandon. Send me one and we'll find out. Muhammad Hamza says, will I ever do a collab with Kick Genius on a performance test? Well, me and Kick Genius don't live in the same place, so I don't know how that would happen. Will Mo 102 says, you mentioned you played against NBA players before. Who was the best NBA player you have played against? Well, first of all, Will Mo, I covered... I actually named every good, all the best players I've ever played against. I've named them on my website. You go to the FAQ, which stands for Frequently Asked Questions. Since people ask me this all the time. I have covered that. The best player I've ever played against, I'll name two. Anthony Parker was one. He used to play for the Cavs and the Raptors. He played overseas for a long time, was a superstar. And probably Joe Johnson. Dmitry Tukovic, also Chris Boss is another guy. Serge Ibaka is another James Harden's another, so there's a lot of people. So go to my website, read the fact. Dimitri Tukovic So I started playing organized basketball last year. I'm 16, 6'2", and he's asking me, can he play professionally in a few years? Because a lot of people told him he started too late. All right, well, first of all, can you play professional basketball in a few years? You don't need to be asking me that. You need to ask yourself that. I do not determine whether or not you can play professional basketball in a few years. You determine that. You need to ask yourself, can I play? If I say, no, you can't, what does that mean? Are you going to quit basketball because somebody told you that you can't? First And second of all, I mean, you got to stop basing your life, your decisions, and your thoughts on what other people say to you. People are going to say a lot of things to you the more you go on in life. He said a lot of people told him he started too late. So if you believe that, then that means you should stop playing basketball right now, right? So do you believe it or do you not? You don't need me, and you can't rely on me or anybody else to pick you up mentally every time somebody says something to you. Words are a dime a dozen. People are going to talk to you your whole life. People are going to say negative things. People are going to say positive things. You can't go and get somebody to tell you whether you should listen every time somebody says something to you. That's part of mental toughness, part of mental strength. Just like we got physical toughness and physical strength and physical game, the mental game, mental toughness, that's all part of the game, and it's all your individual responsibility you and everybody else out there so 
you don't you don't need to come to me or anybody else every time somebody says something to you. You need to think, use your brain, and decide if that's information you need to use or or if it's not. GM Conlas. I already covered that question, and that's it. That's all the questions for this week's Q and A. Thank you everybody for coming through. Again, if you have other questions that have not been covered in this video, make sure you watch the video so you know what's been covered. Leave them in the comments to this video. Do not respond to questions other people ask in the comments. I will cover them all next week in the Q&A. These questions have been pretty good. We've done this eight weeks. It's going pretty well. So as long as y'all keep bringing me good quality questions, we'll keep doing this. If the questions get whacked, then I will discontinue this. But right now, we're going to keep going because it's going well. Again, all merchandise is at woyg.net. All workout programs at hoophandbook.com. If you look for any certain videos from me, I guarantee you I've already done it. Just type in my name in the search bar, Dre Baldwin, and then type in what you're looking for. I guarantee it's already there. Otherwise, you go to my channel, click on the playlist, and I got everything organized. Off the court stuff, on the court stuff, different segments of moves, drills, one-on-one -on -one games, five-on-five -five games, pro games. Anything you want to know about me in detail or any questions I don't cover in video, that's all covered at DreAllDay.com. And if you want to reach me, the quickest way to get a response from me is you can probably tweet me at Dre all day and you can always email me if you go to my website dreallday.com there's a blue button on the side of the screen that says contact click on that button and you can send me an email right there it does go directly to me and you will get a response directly from me just be patient for that response that's it work on your game enjoy the weekend dreallday.com this is Damon from Inkster, Michigan work on your game dreallday